All right, a package has arrived. Let's unpack. This is the Einzar Vega, an all-in-one 3D scanner. Einzar is a brand from Shining 3D, and they contacted me to check whether or not I'd like to do a couple of projects with them. And I practically jumped at the opportunity because they're the first proper relevant company for the kind of projects I do. So let's check out what this thing can do. The first project I've been waiting to do for ages is a custom front lip for the R34 GTR. For that, I will be scanning a stock shaped lip, in this case, the lip I got from Ukubo factory in Japan, and will be using all the shapes and mounting holes as reference for our own. Without a 3D scanner, making a complex part like that would be near impossible, and that is due to the way all the mounting holes are angled in different directions in all the Z-Tune type bumpers. Of course, you could make a mold straight from the part, but my goal here is not to make another replica. The R34 lip always tends to be 1 to 2 cm lower than the side skirts, including extensions. My plan is to build a slightly less tall, but still impressive looking carbon lip. And I'm not the first one to recognize this. Active Garage has done the same thing I'm about to do, because the R32 GTR has the exact same issue. While I was touring all of Japan in my R34, I did visit their shop and had a closer look at their front lips, and that is exactly what mine will be inspired by. So to get started, the first thing we'll need to do is scan the slip. All right, let's turn this on. So, there's two scanning modes. The HD mode is for smaller objects, where you need all the fine details and high quality. And the fast mode, which I'll be using here, is for things that are slightly larger, like our lip here. There's all sorts of options that you can go through and adjust, but we'll leave everything on default for now and have a look how it works out and adjust if we need. After some testing, I slightly adjusted some options and I activated the mark alignment mode and stuck on a couple of these reflective markers because that was improving the tracking and thus the speed you can work with immensely. Because you're not tethered to APC, you're not only able to freely move around with these, you also don't need an additional device with the crazy specs. So when the scan was done, I could simply do some trimming on the Vega itself, but I'll be doing the fine tuning on the PC. If you don't want to do the fine tuning on your PC, you don't even have to connect the Vega anywhere. You simply upload the file to the cloud and download the STL file directly on your PC. I, however, opted to do some more adjusting on the PC within the Vega's own application, StarVision. As soon as you connect the Vega to your PC, it shows up in StarVision and you can import your scans into a workspace. There I trimmed my scan until I was happy with it and explored further options such as filling holes and smoothing your model. However, I didn't end up using smoothing because I want as accurate dimensions as possible. I then exported the model as STL and imported it into Fusion. And there I went through the process of modeling a close copy and then making adjustments to the shape so it resembles what I had in mind. The truth is this has taken me ages because I'm not a pro at modeling and I had to check tutorials for myself, so watching me do it is not quite worth your time. So let's get on with it. When I finally had done it, I decided to print out a prototype directly so I can check whether or not my dimensions were good. I split the model into six parts and popped it onto my Neptune 4 Max. And 24 hours later, when all the parts were done, I had to just assemble it. The way I'm gonna combine these is add some tape on one side, then do some plastic welding on the other side, and remove the tape and add some meshes into the plastic. I went ahead and drilled a couple of holes into the lip. So next I'm gonna put on the Z-Tune bumper and then I can check whether or not I have to change and adjust some things before printing the mold itself. I reckon they're pretty good overall, but I'm gonna mark a couple of spots and then maybe do some adjustments in 3D as an infusion. And then I'll get on printing the mold. Let's do it. I sat down again, made some modifications, and split the mold I made of the improved model also into six parts.
Next, I brought all the parts into Orca Slicer, and after changing to a 0.8 mm nozzle on my 3D printer, I went with these settings. 0.4 mm layer height, four wall loops, and 15% infill. I threw all the models on the 3D printer, and it took over three days to print out all the bits. I've got all parts laid out now, and next I gotta prepare and assemble them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand each surface that is gonna be glued to one another with some 60 or 80 grit. And then I'm also gonna quickly 3D print some packs for which I made some holes in each of the sides. And those are actually 3D printing here right now. And to glue everything together, I'm going to be using my trusty 5-minute epoxy. The plan is to lay the carbon straight into the 3D printed mold. For a one time occasion, I believe this should be good enough as I'm gonna top coat the part anyway after the molding. But before getting started, I'm gonna prep the mold first. First, I'm gonna lay some filleting wax into all these gaps, and then I'm gonna use wax and PVA for a proper release from the mold. If I were to use this mold more often though, I'd probably be sanding the top surface and adding a thin layer of epoxy so I can buff that out so the finished parts that I'm pulling from the mold are going to be a much nicer finish. For now though, this is going to be good enough, but I also want to just give it a try and see how it works. So let's get going.
Bam. Okay, I pulled the lip out of the mold and cleaned it up as well as scuffed it up with a scotch bright pad. There's some bridging visible due to the wet layup I've done, but I believe with the top coats I'm going to be doing next, it's going to be looking fine. I also really like having this flange around it because it means I can flip it around and close it up from the bottom side with a flat piece of carbon, for example, or even leave a lip on the front side when it's done for an even more aggressive look. But yeah, that's it. I'll give it a resin top coat right now and maybe even coat it black to hide the imperfections in the carbon. And then I'll cut right to the finished part for you to check out. I do hope you enjoyed this because I'll be doing quite a few more cool parts like this in the upcoming videos to show you even more of what the Einstein Vega is capable of. Without it, I wouldn't have been able to make this and I can't wait to do more awesome projects. If you're interested in the scan itself, I'll be uploading the SEL file for you to play around with in case you want to build a R34 lip yourself. Alright then, here comes the final result and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!